Some of you may have already seen the new Science and Sport Beta Fuel Gel and wondered what all of the hype is about and whether it lives up to the claims that Science and Sport make. Others might not have known it's a thing. And if that's you, it is. Science and Sport have recently come out with a new Beta Fuel range, including this gel. Before, they just had a Beta Fuel sachet, which was a powder that you mixed with a liquid to make a drink. But the updated Beta Fuel range and the gel have a better nutritional profile to help you race faster. In this video, I'm going to review the Beta Fuel gel and give you some of my thoughts on it and whether it could actually help improve your racing. So let's get into this for you. First things first, as some transparency, I'm not sponsored or affiliated with Science and Sport in any way. There's no profit for me in this. I do use their products because on a personal level, I think they're good. But the aim today is to give you some balance and an unbiased opinion here. Okay, so first let's quickly cover the why. We're not gonna go into the murky depths of why you need it, apart from saying that carbohydrates are king when it comes to racing performance, and this is a carbohydrate supplement, so it might help with racing performance. Now, what does the Beta Fuel Gel actually contain? Well, it's a mix of maltodextrin or glucose and fructose at a ratio of 1 to 0.8. They've made this new Beta Fuel Gel contain this 1 to 0.8 ratio, and it's this that makes it different from the old Science and Sport Beta Fuel formula, and it's a very deliberate change which they're making a lot of noise about. I recently did a video where I went through the evidence behind this change in formula and why they have changed it. As previously, their beta fuel range contained maltodextrin and fructose at a ratio of two to one. I've linked it at the top of the screen for you if you're interested, but just in case, we'll cover that very briefly for you now so it still makes sense. Don't wanna to be too clickbaity, hey? So. Short story short, Science and Sport changed their beta fuel range to deliver maltodextrin and fructose at a 1 to 0.8 ratio because a study in 2013 showed that the amount of carbohydrates that you can absorb and then use is better with this new ratio compared to the traditional 2 to 1 formula. To give some context here, by the way, as well, most other companies using a glucose and fructose combination for their carbohydrates gel use the old two to one ratio. So Science and Sport are clearly aiming to provide superior supplements. The only company that I know of who use this one to 0.8 ratio as well is Martin. You know, the company who sponsor Jan Fredino and Eliud Kipchoge, just to name a few. So this change puts Science and Sport in some good company. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go over what I think are some of the positives of the new Science and Sport Beta Fuel Gel. First things first, I think that it probably is a superior formula compared to most other supplements out there for providing carbohydrates when racing. So I believe that this does help to provide the maximum amount of carbohydrates when racing, which then helps to fuel your muscles and allow you to race to your potential. So that's a big plus in my book and it sets it apart from other carbohydrate supplements. Each gel contains 40 grams of carbohydrates and that's another positive in my opinion. You're actually getting quite a reasonable amount of carbohydrates in one go, meaning that you don't have to use them quite as frequently. Depending on your target carbohydrate intake, you could actually just take one or two of these per hour. And given it actually only takes a moment to slurp a gel down, that means you can spend more time focused on your racing rather than faffing around with your nutrition. Although, saying that, they can be a bit fiddly and I'll cover that later as that's one of the negatives. So I also think that it tastes pretty good too. I've tried both the orange flavor and the strawberry and lime flavor, and I think they're both pretty palatable, meaning that I don't actually mind using them repeatedly. And as I mentioned, because they actually contain more carbohydrates per gel, you actually don't have to consume as many of them. They're also batch tested under the Informed Sport program, meaning there's a lower likelihood of inadvertent doping when you use a product like this, which again is another big plus. Cost is actually another positive for them too. As I mentioned, the only other supplement that I know of that provide carbs in that same ratio are the Martin gels. And the Martin gels come out as about £2.60 per serving, while these come out as about £2. They also contain about 15 grams more carbohydrates per gel, providing about 40 grams 
compared to the 25 grams from the Martin gel. So that means you're actually getting more for your money there too from a carbohydrate point of view. As a final positive, I find that I tolerate these gels well. I don't get any sort of stomach upset with them and I feel good when I use them. I recently raced at the age group European Championships for triathlon and I used these science and sport beta fuel gels for that. And I actually did a video about my experience at the race and my nutrition plan during it. So I've linked that at the top of the screen if you're interested. However, to be fair, this tolerating them point is personal and you need to make sure that you get on with them. But for me, they're good. Okay, so let's move on to the negatives because we're all about balance here. Firstly, and this is probably my biggest bugbear with them, is that they're really tricky to open. I wonder if it's just early days since it's a relatively new product or whether it's because they've made the packaging sturdy and luxurious, but you've really got to work to open them. Which means that if you're in the zone, they could be a bit annoying and ruin your concentration. So it's this part when you just try to pull and it doesn't really want to. However, this isn't a particular biggie if you're already aware of it. All you really need to do is just make a really light cut here with some scissors before you race. And this just makes it so much easier to open. It means if you're running or you're on your bike, you can do this and it doesn't really cause you a problem. And again, I did this for my race in Valencia and it was fine. So another potential negative is cost. What? You listed that as a positive? I know, I know. And compared to the only other supplement that provides carbs in that ratio, it is still cost effective, but it is still a relatively expensive supplement at two pounds a go. So it is worth considering this. Is it something to go for in everyday training? Well, personally, I wouldn't say so because it's a bit overkill and actually the cost will quickly rack up. Most training sessions, you won't actually need a supplement like this and you're better off taking a food first approach and making sure that your general overall dietary quality is good and that you eat well before your sessions. And depending on what your session is, you might actually be just as well served by having something like a banana, an oat bar or a slightly sugary drink. All right, so other negatives. Actually, I don't have any. I don't have many bad things to say about this product because I actually think that it's a great supplement for racing. As I said, I don't think that it's something that you need to be using for every day, but for race day nutrition and helping you perform at your best, I think it is a great product. So if you decide to use it, here's my affiliate link. Now, I'm just joking. As I mentioned, I don't have any links to science and sport, and I don't really think that I should create affiliate links for these types of products. My aim is to provide you guys with balanced, unbiased advice and I can't let financial gain influence what I do. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, then do consider subscribing to this channel. Remember to press the notification icon to get an alert when I release a new video and remember that subscribing is free. And otherwise, that just about wraps it up for today's video. Enjoy your training and I'll catch you next time. See ya.